All right, Chef Scott, all yours. All right, now we're talking. Okay, so first I wanted to start out. We're going to be doing some fall items. Very simple, but you know, a lot of people say, what do I do with spaghetti squash? What do I do with Brussels sprouts? They're really easy. You can roast them. There's not a lot of preparation in them. So we're going to do that today with a little fancy sauce. You're going to learn a lot about sauces when you come to our school. I, we had a pumpkin carved here. You can see it says it's coffier. It's very intricate. There's a lot of detail on here. Let me show you. If you can pin the, the other, um, my other, pin this one, pin the other camera. Okay. There we go. There we go. All right. So you can see this is big car by my friend. He used to work with me for, we worked together for 13 years. And I got him a set of carving tools one day because he was the garmage chef at the time that he became you know, now he's an executive chef. But at the time, he was a garmage chef, and he loved to mess around. And so he started carving watermelons, and then it turned into pumpkins. So I told him a couple of days ago, I wanted you to carve me a pumpkin for the school, and look what he did, a scoffier. So there's a lot of a lot of artwork that goes into that. Um, and it's something that, you know, you can focus on, you know, in your career, because... Doing carvings for buffets and things like that are a lot of fun. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is, okay, I'm going to show you a couple things that I roasted. All right, so first is, this is spaghetti squash. All I did was cut it in half, take the center out, right? Like, uh, like cantaloupe seeds. And then I took a fork and all I did was puncture some holes in here, about three or four, three or four, just so the steam can come out when you cook it. I added a little bit of olive oil and uh, 400 degrees, one hour this morning, this is what they look like. I'm gonna show you how to scrape those. Next thing that I did was I took some Brussels sprouts, right? Just like these. And I roasted these also at 400 degrees. And all you have to do is take the tip off like this, take the bottom off, just like that. See that? And then you take this and you cut it in half. That's as easy as how you clean your Brussels sprouts. It's not a big deal. Some people X the bottom, but I, I never did that. I, I think that's a lot of work for nothing. All right, so now you have some. So how did I roast these? I put a little olive oil on the pan, put my Brussels sprouts, toss them, and it's salt, salt and pepper, 400 degree oven, 30 minutes. I also rendered off some bacon in a pan, and the leftover fat I put in with the Brussels sprouts. So now I have Brussels sprouts and bacon, and now I'm going to make a simple sauce. So I'm going to turn my stove on. Easy peasy. Oops, one second. Sorry. Okay, now I'm going to turn my stove on. By the way, this is an induction stove. It's a lot simpler. I do, did put uh, some onions in, in here that are not in the recipe. You can start out with a little bit of onions. We're going to make what, what is called a simple burnt block, but with a twist. So you can use shallots. I got onions. I put a little white wine, and this time I'm going to use apple cider vinegar, about two ounces of each. Very simple. All right, and I'm going to bring that up to a boil. To boil pretty quick, because this is made from, you can see it starting to steam already. Look at that. That's how quick it does. Um, when you have an induction burner, which is this is, it's so easy to work. 
I'm going to take a little bit of time. I'm using dry time. The rest of you calls for fresh time, but I have some dry time, so I'm going to use that. And then all I'm doing is boiling this. It's really easy. I'm going to bring it up to a boil, and I have some soft butter here, as you can see, that I'm going to add to this. I mean, look how fast that goes. This induction stove is, is used by uh, using a, a magnet. There's a magnet on the stove and a magnet on the bottom of the pan. So I'm touching the handle right now and it's ice cold. It doesn't get hot because there's no heat being conducted into the handle. All right, so as you can see, that's almost reduced. Right now, I could have done that a little slower. So what I'm going to do is, this is reduced where it's a little bit almost dry, and now I'm going to add just about one ounce of water. All right, and then when I add that water, I'm going to bring it back up to a boil. All right, real quick, just like that, and now I'm going to turn it down. All right now, I want to. I don't want it to simmer too much. And now I'm going to add my butter, stir it in. Slowly. A few tabs at a time. And the reason I add the water is if I don't add the water, the milk solids and the butter fat will, will separate. We don't want that. We want it to stay together. To form a sauce. So, this typical sauce is called a beurre blanc. B U E R R E B L N C. A lot of you, a lot of you might recognize it as lemon butter. That's right. That's what it is. It's a simple lemon butter. And the secret to a good lemon butter is you want it thick. Don't boil it. Once you add the butter, don't boil it because if you boil it, you're going to separate the fat. And it's going to look broken. When it looks broken, it just looks like it looks like oil and vinegar. It looks like it's separated. So you can see how this is really forming really, really well. Right? Look at that. So simple. But when it's done right, you can use this sauce for fish. You can use this sauce over sole. You can use it over. Red snapper, any type of whitefish, Chilean sea bass. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, just a pinch, don't go crazy. A little bit of black pepper, don't go crazy. And that's it. And then I'm going to taste it. See if it's seasoned enough. It's easy. Look at that. Yeah. Delicious. Okay, and the other thing that I can add is some lemon juice. So I'm going to take this, turn this off. I don't need it on anymore. And I'm going to squeeze some lemon in there. I like to use a strainer so the seeds don't get in there. All right, so now I have basically a lemon butter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that lemon butter and I have some diced apples, as you can see. I'm going to add some diced apples. These are Granny Smith, uh, Granny Smith apples. They hold up really good. I'm going to strain that sauce. Right on top of the apples. And now I have a beautiful lemon apple butter. Look at that. Just beautiful. Okay. Now for the spaghetti squash, real simple. All I'm doing is after it's cooked, it's cooked for about one hour. You can cook it for 40 minutes to an hour. And then all you do is take your forks. Sort of drag it. See that? Be careful because it's still hot. This came out of the oven. But look at that. So pretty. 
Now, I have seen some chefs actually serve the spaghetti squash, right, in the outside of the squash and just put it on the plate like that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. You can do that, All right? But we're going to kick it up a notch. All right, so we're going to take, see how beautiful that is? It just, it just, it looks like spaghetti. Just beautiful. So pretty. Make sure you get it all. Don't want to waste it. All right, this is a great dish for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, anything to do in the fall season. You could mix this with sauteed shrimp. All right, that, make, that would make a really good combination. All right, okay. Next step, we're gonna take our Brussels sprout. Mix in our Brussels sprouts. All right, give it some color. Look at that, just beautiful. Okay. That looks great, Chef. And, and guys, if anybody has questions, feel free to ask away. Uh, We're here to, to to answer questions as you guys, uh, as Chef Scott's uh, um, completing the demonstration. It looks, looks super yummy. Okay, so now we're going to get our sauce. Now remember, this has got apples in it. And the apples were not cooked, but as the heat from the sauce, heats the apples, you're gonna wilt these apples, the apples will wilt a little bit. Now, once you get it like that, you can plate it up. You're ready to do some plating. Something very simple. I mean, look at this dish for, for the holiday. Think about that. Everybody brings the same boring vegetables every year. Broccoli, casserole, all kinds of the same sweet potatoes, which are all fine and dandy. But this is something that you can really show off with. It doesn't require a lot of preparation. Literally, it'll take you less than a, less than an hour to make this. All right, so once you have it like that, you're going to add your bacon, right? As a garnish. Oh, yeah, nice crispy bacon. You can spoon a little bit more sauce over the top. But there you have it. You got a roasted spaghetti squash and Brussels sprouts with an apple lemon butter. Look how beautiful that is. Ta-da! Well, that looks amazing, Chef Scott, but we do have a question from Linda who was wondering if you can use something other than Brussels sprouts. Sure. Absolutely. You could you could use cauliflower roasted the same way, broccoli roasted the same way. Um, you could use yeah, those those vegetables would work very well. Even asparagus. You could roast your asparagus tips. Same thing in the oven. I would cut them down, you know, cut the bottoms off, and then maybe cut the asparagus in half so you have the tips in the bottoms. Toss that in salt and pepper, a little olive oil, roast it in the oven for about 20 minutes, and then add that to your spaghetti squash. I mean, I just think this is just such a good fall dish. And if you add shrimp, then you have a main course. Any other questions? Yes, it looks like we had a question. Um, someone had just logged in and she was asking what time like what temperature do you put this the brussels sprouts in and the squash degrees. okay and how long do you leave brussels it in the oven? And the spaghetti squash 400 degrees for how long well i cook the spaghetti squash i cook it between 40 minutes and an hour and the brussels sprouts i cook for about uh, 30 30 to 40 minutes Great, thank you. And then what other things could you substitute for more vegan options other than the bacon? Well, you can you could omit the bacon and you could put chopped fresh thyme on top. Awesome. 
Thank you, chef. And instead of salt and pepper with the asparagus, could you use a Greek seasoning? Absolutely. Any seasoning that you want. You could put salt and pepper, you could put sea salt, you could do a, a seasoning spice in there if you like. You could do lemon juice and salt and pepper if you wanted. You could do hot sauce and salt, whatever you like. What else okay. could you add to the dish other than Brussels sprouts and bacon? Could you do like shrimp? 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 I like shrimp. Yeah. Okay. I think shrimp would be really good. Of course, sliced turkey is going to go great with this dish, right? For for the holiday, sliced turkey would be great. Sliced duck would be great. This is a good side for sliced duck breast. This is a good side for steak. You know, in the fall, this will go with anything uh, as a side. You know, and it's very, very, you know, autumn-y, you know, instead of the same boring vegetables all the time. Let's not do that all the time. So this is something that literally will take you under an hour to cook. Okay. And if we could back up, I think you had mentioned something about shrimp. You said, what did, you, um, if you could repeat what you asked about the shrimp being added and would salmon also work as a side dish? Yes, salmon would work. I like sauteed shrimp with this dish just because I think it works really well. But literally, chicken, steak, pork. Oh, pork would go good. A pork chop with this a little applesauce. You're in heaven. Awesome. And is there a way to prep the Brussels sprouts to reduce the bitterness in the taste? Well, when you roast it, it won't be bitter. So when you roast it, and you cook it through, it will not be bitter. Sometimes you'll get a bitter taste because you didn't cook the Brussels sprouts enough. So you want to cook it so that the Brussels sprouts are pliable. They're easily, you know, they move. They don't spring back in your hand. Good to know. I never knew that. So, and what about, can you add garlic on the sprouts? Oh, yes. Garlic, shallots, whatever you like. Yes. That'll work very, very well. But it's just a great autumn dish and it's something different and it's something that's really, really tasty and doesn't require a lot of preparation. Awesome, let's see, some other comments coming in. Morningstar bacon, is it made of soy? I'm not familiar with that. Not really sure, don't know okay. that. Okay. Um, and then balsamic vinegar and brown sugar reduction, question mark? Sure. Any additions that you may enjoy, you can add to this. What would be wrong with that? Cooking is about experimenting. So try it. If you like it, go for it. You could definitely could have tossed that in balsamic vinegar before you roasted them. I just like them. I like them to taste like Brussels sprouts, but there's nothing wrong with it. Many people do that. Some people even, did you ever hear about frying your Brussels sprouts? Some people actually deep fry them until they come nice and crispy. They're really good too. I had not heard of that. Any oh, yeah. other questions out there? There's some good questions coming in. Yeah, you can fry your Brussels sprouts. You cut them just the way I showed you. Get your fryer at 375, drop it in the fryer. You'll see it start to blister. It'll get nice and golden brown. As soon as it's golden brown, take it out of the fryer, drain it, season it with salt, eat it like French fries. Delicious. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. I look like Farmer Jed, don't I? <laughs> Howdy, y'all. My name is Chef Scott Cohen, coming to you from Bernie King. <laughs> Oh, uh, Chef Scott. <laughs> my three doggies. <laughs> All right. Chef Scott, thank you so much. Um